Most guitar teachers don't want you to know this one thing because if you did, you would probably stop taking lessons altogether. And I know this because I've been teaching guitar professionally for over 25 years. Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you what that thing is and how to solve it. And by the end of this video, you might not need to take guitar lessons anymore. I was 15 years old when I started teaching. Most of my students were much older than I was. As a matter of fact, most of them were in their 50s, some in their 60s, some in their 70s. And yet they felt that they needed to take guitar lessons to progress, which is great. And they came to me, a young guitar player who really didn't have that much experience, but I had a lot of time. And it's during that time that I figured out that the guitar is much more than just placing your fingers on the fretboard and triggering the sound of the notes with your pick. See, the thing with the guitar is that it's a very expressive instrument. There are other instruments in that category, like a violin or a trumpet. Instruments that really engage the whole being. The whole musician is engaged in the process. And those instruments are designed for the musician to express themselves in a way that is very organic. And I say this in contrast of other instruments, such as a piano. A piano, of course, can be very expressive, but you are still limited in terms of expression with a piano because the only way you can trigger a note is by hitting a key. And the only tool of expression you have when hitting that key is the amount of strength you will hit that key with. You still have that on the guitar, but you also have other things such as vibrato. And you also can get a much wider range of volume when hitting a note with your pick, your fingers. And in addition to that, you can alter the sound of the note depending on the type of pick you're using, the fingers you're using, but also the placement of the left fingers. Now we're gonna get back to that aspect in just a few seconds, but first, let's consider this. Let's take a very simple five note blues lick. We're gonna play this in the key of G minor pentatonic, and that lick will sound very different depending on who's playing it. A beginner player might play it this way. Now the right notes are played, it's in rhythm, everything is fine, but that's pretty much it. Now let's give the same exact lick to a more experienced player. Same notes, same rhythm, yet that lick sounded so much better. It was a lot more expressive. It's that element of expression that most guitar teachers don't want you to know. Because if you had it, anything you play will sound spectacular. Oh, right, here's how it works. First of all, you need to have a sound that cleans up when you play softly. This is what I mean. I have a little bit of drive here, and when I attack the notes with a lot of strength, we'll get something like this. However, if I softly strike the strings, I'm gonna get a cleaner tone. You really need to have that kind of sound to be more in touch with what we're going to work on. Next, I want you to look at your fingers. These black lines represent where most beginner players are going to fret the strings. You can't be very expressive by doing it that way. Now, if you've been playing like that for years, it's not your fault. It's most likely because typically, Guitar teachers will tell you to play it that way. That comes from the classical guitar world where you really have to have a super clean note without much expression. Now, I'm not saying that classical guitar is not expressive. It's just that the expression in classical music comes typically from the vibrato and the choice of notes, the arrangements and all that stuff. Instead of fretting the strings with these lines, I want you to fret them in this zone of the finger. And it looks like this on the fretboard. Instead of having your fingers straight on the strings, you're gonna flatten them a little bit. By doing this, we have a lot more flesh that is in direct contact with the string. This is gonna give you a lot more expressive control when hitting these notes. So that's the first thing to think about. So let's take a simple lick. We're gonna go back to that G minor pentatonic scale. Here's the lick we're gonna play. Let's try that lick one more time. And I want you to hear the difference. We're gonna start with our fingers straight against the fretboard, which is something I don't want you to do, but let's hear what it sounds like. 
Kind of sounds vanilla. Now let's add some flavor to it by flattening our fingers. It's subtle, but there is a difference. There's a certain depth and a certain compression that happens when you have more flesh in contact with the string. We're going to accentuate that by adding a little bit of vibrato. And I want you to be aware of the feeling you're getting on your fingers. And you'll notice that that feeling in your fingers is gonna be accentuated as you flatten your wrist, as you're using more flesh against the strings. I want you to repeat this several times, and as you're doing this, experiment with the placement of your fingers. Maybe a few notes will be flattened, a few others will be straight on the fretboard, maybe add a little bit of vibrato. Just be aware of what you're feeling as you're playing this. It's a very tactile thing and it allows you to be more in touch with the instrument, almost as the instrument is an extension of your body. Now, there's something very interesting that happens when you're doing this exercise. Not only do you feel more connected with the instrument, but it also triggers new ideas as you're doing this. You feel a little bit more in control. You feel that you are more part of what's going on musically and the listener is going to hear that difference. It's subtle, but at the same time, it's massive. It's really what will make the difference between a clumsy beginner player and a more advanced player. We're gonna add one more thing to this because it's not just about the finger placement. It's also about what happens here. We're gonna play a little role-playing game. We're gonna take the same exact lick and I want you to play it as if you were sleepwalking. Say sleepwalking, it could be anything else, but we'll see what happens. So how can I play this as a sleepwalker? Maybe we'll start with some soft notes, because you're still sleeping. Very lazy, take your time as you're playing the lick. Or maybe we're going to bump, bump ourselves as we're walking, and then uh, I'm back to sleep. Or maybe, we're taking a few steps. Oh, there's no right or wrong way to doing this. It's all about your imagination and adding to the musical idea a story element. Let's try something else. Let's say that now we're gonna play that idea in the role of a really angry boss who is firing his employee. So I might translate that with hard notes. Or maybe a hyper boss who speaks really fast because he's, well, hyper. Or maybe to the point, you are fired. The same like different outcomes. It all depends on what you want to say with that lick. See, a lick is a word, and there are many ways of saying a word, depending on the expression that you want to give to that word or that sentence. Now, I know what you're saying. That's pretty basic, very simple stuff, but I promise that that's where it starts. The result is massive when you add those elements of expression in a full solo. And people really do hear the difference. There's that certain level of competence and expression and freedom that comes from utilizing those techniques of expression by flattening your fingers, playing different characters that really comes across in the music. You know what, there's actually one more thing that most guitar teachers don't talk about. And when you combine that thing 
with what we just talked about today, magic happens. And I'm going to tell you all about it in this video. I'll meet you there.